Hi folks, it's darn hard to try to make money when you start in 1850. Well in this video, I'm going to show you what I believe is a simple approach to starting the game in 1850 and making money. Now I don't normally do Let's Play style videos, but I really don't know how else to go about describing my approach to you. So let's get making money in 1850. Let's get started. Smash that subscribe button below right now and click on the bell so you don't miss out on more great content. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Or just give it a thumbs up for yourself so that you'll always be able to come back and watch it again if you need to. Okay, here we go. We're going to pick a free game. And we're creating a new game and I like the temperate type of map. And I don't want a lot of hilliness or too much water, and I don't want too much forest. And if you wanted to pick the exact same map that I'm choosing, uh, there's the random code that's been set up by the game itself. So right now the settings for my map are very large. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. I have a very high number of towns and a very high number of industries. So what that means is I'll have a 16 by 16 kilometer map, 27 towns, and 215 industries. And we hit next. So the start year will be 1850, and we're going to set it to a respectable level of difficulty. I've got it on medium, and I'm going to leave it there. Now I will go to the custom settings so you can see what I have set up. Now I have a number of mods that are subscribed to and enabled. And a lot of these won't play into today's video, but just so you know, there's an auto parallel track, so I might use that. There's a nice modern bridge, the Type 1 modern concrete viaduct. There's better uh, residential, commercial, and industrial colors. Better roads, a variety of changes to improve the visual appearance of roads. Uh, better roundabouts, so you can, if you want to build a roundabout, you can do it perfectly basically. Uh, there's the Boeing 747 cargo pack which I won't get into today and then A380. There's basically assets that aren't going to be uh, used today. There's Go Transit trains, there's buses, uh, more in line colors. I do like that one and I probably end up using it today. There's natural town growth. Towns grow more naturally than they normally would in the game. Another asset, Parallel Highway, Parallelism 1.4. One I particularly like is the Track Street Builder Info. It displays detailed information for track and street construction. I just find that useful. Some more assets in there. I do have achievements with mods activated. I think that's reasonable based on the conditions and in particular because of the things I don't have activated. So lifespan times 50 is not activated. The no cost mods not activated. I'm not in sandbox mode, so I can't change anything. And the vehicles no end year is not activated. So basically I don't have any mods that are activated that affect the financial aspects of the game or the lifespan or duration of a vehicle. So I think that's fair if I have those off to put the achievement with mods on. And of course, since this is a video that's about, you know, making money starting in 1850, I think that would basically be cheating if I turn some of these mods on. The climate is temperate. I've got vehicles are American. I'm going to go with the American town names, uh, temperate environment. And again, we're at a medium difficulty and we hit save. So we're starting in 1850, medium difficulty, and let's hit start. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the game. I don't want to lose money when I haven't built anything yet and we're still in the planning phases. I've seen the welcome screen, so I can close that. So let's take a peruse of our map and see what we've got. We've got lots of towns, we have lots of industry, and lots of opportunities, but where to start? Now where I like to start is with a city and basically feed a city. So I'm looking for a city like Hayward that wants food. 
Now you may ask, well, why do that? Well, my philosophy is feed a city, get it to grow, because a bigger city has more transportation needs, which will help us out later. The other thing is that a food supply chain is a very simple supply chain. And it's one that we can get a complete supply chain with building minimal assets. And a more ideal city would actually be with food and with construction materials, because construction materials is another very simple or lower tier uh, supply chain. But that's not just what we're looking for. We need other things around it to make it work. Now, one thing you will hear and probably and seen in other videos is people will tell you that, well, you know, you got to pick out where the transportation hub of your entire map is going to be. And the reason for that is to plan out not what your map is going to look like in 1850, but what your map going to look like in 2050. And those are good ideas, but sometimes all of that can be very overwhelming. I mean, basically, your hub for your transportation is likely going to be a major city like, what's this one here, Colorado Springs, or it could be this one over here. What's that one? Bridgeport. In any event, it's probably going to be a city that's near the middle of your map and is fairly large, and that would be your transportation hub. So it's a very good idea to plan things out. But at this stage of the game, there are so many options and so many permutations that it can get pretty overwhelming. So what I'm gonna suggest is that we take a very simple approach. And that is that we create a very small line somewhere that's predominantly rail and we start making some money. Now here's Colorado Springs. Colorado Springs needs food and construction materials. The two simplest or two of the simplest supply chains products that there are on the map. So is this a good opportunity? So to have a complete food chain we need obviously we need farms that produce grain. We need the city that will accept the food but we also need a food processing plant. And there's a food processing plant right there, the Colorado Springs Food Processing Plant. And it likes to keep putting these tips on. We'll just turn that off. So there's an opportunity there. And what we could do is we could have a train going from the Colorado Springs Farm here or from over here, Colorado Springs Farm number two, could bring grain to the food processing plant the food processing plant could then bring food to Colorado Springs and then we deadhead back. Now there are two reasons people will tell you not to start with a food supply or a food supply chain with the farming. And I think the number one reason is that the deadheading that you can get into with trains. So deadheading is when trains are moving and they're not carrying anything. So they're moving and they're costing you money. They're not making your money. And certainly one of the rules of thumb in this game is you don't want to deadhead at all. But sometimes you can still make money. And if you just minimize your deadheading as opposed to completely eliminating it, it'll still work for you. So what do I mean by that? Well, you know, here's a pretty good straight line between this farm and if I have a station here at Colorado Springs and we have a food processing plant here. But if I set up a rail line like this, there will be some deadheading. So, you know, a train would start here, take wheat all the way to the Colorado Springs food processing plant. We'd bring food to Colorado Springs and then we deadhead back to the farm. So essentially one quarter of the route would be deadheading. Turn that tip off. So what I'm suggesting to you that's a very simple way to start the game something like that and you can still make money. So and I realize the rule of thumb is don't deadhead your trains. However I think this will work. I've done it before so I'm really hoping it works today is that with a minor amount of deadheading, with the, in this case about 25%, that we can get it to work 
we'll have a good start and we can start making money in a very simple way in 1850. So let's get building. So in Colorado Springs, I have to think about where do I want the train station for cargo? I think obviously I want it in this area here somewhere. It's a little bit hilly though. I don't like that. Um, hilly's okay, but bridges are an absolute no-no. Do not build any bridges uh, right off the bat. Otherwise you will lose money and it'll just It'll likely be a death blow to you because they cost money in just too many ways. So I'm talking a lot and I need to do some more building. So let's build cargo station. We're going to do two tracks. I think 120 meters in length is fine. We'll just orientate that. Something like that. I want to be right in between. Imagine a straight line between these two thing so the wheat farm here sorry the grain farm I keep seeing wheat and the processing plant down here so something like this and I'll bring a road out to it all right we have our first station in place now obviously I got to connect some roads to it so I'm going to spend a minimal amount of money so a city road uh, maybe not too small a medium street 40 kilometers per hour and I don't need a tram track so I'll hit no and I'll go with straight actually I should probably curve it maybe that'll work if I curve right in through there hit connect yes it did maybe I can get a better connection oh I did hit that I think that's going to work. I'm just worried it only has one little tiny connector there. I'm hoping that works anyway. And I really don't know if you have one little tiny connection or you have more if that really means anything. But since I don't know, I'm going to bring that road in closer just to make sure. This time I go straight. Get in nice and tight. No, I don't like that. That's too close. Okay, that's as tight as I can get it. I'll put in a curve section there. And we'll curve it around. It's not working out very well, is it? Get rid of that. Oh, well, let's just put a straight section in. Okay, it looks a little wonky from a street perspective, but everything's going to focus around our train line. So we will need a truck station there. So there's a truck station. I don't need tram tracks. Um, I only need one platform at this time. Do I want it on the right? No. On the left? No, I want it on the other side. I like that, sorry, like that. And I want it long. The reason I want it nice and long is because once the trains start moving, the truck station will load up pretty heavily and I don't want to lose a lot of product. So let's just make sure it is loaded up. Sorry, let's just make sure that it's as big as I can make it at the moment. Maybe I can straighten that out just a little bit so it doesn't look so awful. There we go, and we put that into place. And again, I still, I still have the game on pause because I don't really have anything in place and I don't want to lose money because I've already well, lost some money because I'm building things. So now we need to find out where in Colorado Springs is the food required. So we go here. And lucky for us, it's all in this area here. So I'm going to try to cover that area with minimal number of truck stops or truck stations. Actually, it's truck stops. Truck unload stop, yeah. So I could have one here. It just doesn't quite cover that. So I might have to go that way. 
get in a little closer here so I can see yeah that way and then that way and I'm not sure if the last one's got covered off so I'll put in just one for good measure and we set up our truck line the new line we're going to go from here to there there and to there And we'll give it a name that makes sense to us since we don't have a lot of lines at this time, but we are going to need to name them so we can keep it all straight later. So let's Colorado. Call it Colorado Food Trucks. I realize you don't have to put the word trucks in there because you can sort these lines by uh, asset type like you know trucks and buses and rail and air and ships and so on but I just like putting that in there that's my style um, so at the Colorado Springs annex what we want to do is we want them to load full you want them to full load all and I'm going to have them wait unlimited So the next thing to do is to get a depot in there to supply this thing with some trucks so we'll put a depot in and we'll just rotate that around get it lined up I like them as 90 degrees to the road as possible and we'll just buy a few trucks to start out so cargo I only have one choice it has it carries all the cargo types and we'll just buy three to start. The only line to put them to. All right, so we have our trucks poised and ready to pick up the food and take it around to Colorado Springs. Now let's go back to this farm. Now I like to nestle the train station or terminal right as close to the farm as possible. I have had some cases where I haven't done that and it hasn't worked out very well for me. So I'm going to just alter this road a little bit. So I'll go to roads, streets, country streets, and I just need a little one for the moment. And I'm just going to put it right here. And I kind of want this road to be out of the way. And it's cost me a little bit more money, but I'll just remove that for the moment. And I'll go back to trains, buildings, cargo, my cargo terminus station. I only want one set of tracks, but I want the longest terminus station I can get. And there's a reason for that. Just rotate that around. The reason is that it's going to fill up very quickly. I don't want to lose product, so I want it to fill up. I want to be able to store as much grain as possible. So I think it's worth spending the $328,000 in change to make this thing work. I'm pretty sure it'll load up quick, and that'll be one of the problems we have to deal with very early in the game. Yeah, I kind of broke that road there, didn't I? Well, I'll probably have to connect it later, but for now, it's not a problem, so I'll just leave it. So let's go down to the other end to our food processing plant. Now, this food processing plant may serve other communities, so I think I won't make it a terminus station. I'll make it a, what's the other word? Not a terminus station. Well, it's just a cargo station. And in this case, I only need one set of tracks. I don't need 320 meters. I think 120 is just fine. I like to line it up nicely. There we go. So now we have our stations in place. So now we just have to connect them. So I'll go to tracks, and initially I don't need a parallel track because I'm just coming right off the station itself. But now I'm going to go to 
parallel tracks. I'm hoping that even though I'm crossing a road, it will give me a parallel track. Let's see what it does. It didn't. Or did it? No, it did not. Okay. I don't know what went wrong there. So in that case, we'll just do a single track. You don't have that much farther to go, and we'll hook it up. Go in short little spurts, otherwise it's going to cost me a lot of money if I go in longer spurts. Now actually, this is not working out well. I probably would have been better to go straight. Yuck. Well, there's an opportunity right now to fix my mistakes. Let's do that. We'll get rid of this, and we'll see if we can fix that and make it more straighter between the two terminals. And the reason for that, as you probably already know, is you get paid by or for as the crow flies. So we want to be as much of a straight line between the two terminals as possible. That's nice and straight. Okay, that's going to be better. And then we'll double up the line. Oop, don't like that. Move this around so I can see what I'm doing. All right, let's double up this line. And we'll keep going. I don't know why the parallel track didn't work for me there. Sometimes when I'm crossing a road, it just won't do it. And that's connected. I've got to connect over to this farm. So we'll do that and put in our second track. And then we'll just bring that around. And this is going to finish off our loop, so to speak. Now you might ask, well, why am I building a double track when I could start with a single track with sidings? And the answer is to keep the trains moving as fast as possible. I want them moving as fast as possible because the faster they move, the more money we make. And we'll just put some signals in here to keep our trains moving. These are one-way signals, so our trains will be traveling in a counterclockwise direction. And uh, look at that, I didn't make a connection. Actually, I don't need those there. That's too close to the terminal. And the terminal itself will act as a, the terminal itself will act as a signal. So let's put some track in right there. And let's take those two out. I think that is a waste of money. I'm trying to hit just that. There we go. Got it. We'll go down here. We'll put some more uh, more signals in to keep those trains moving. And maybe one last one down here. Okay, we have our train line set up. Well, I guess I have to have a depot yet, don't I? Well, let's set it up down here. Here's my train depot. And I'm just doing a very simple way to start. Rotate that around. And maybe move it over here, like that. And we'll put some tracks. Hmm, no, I don't like this. 
Let's blow that up. You gotta get a refund, I haven't used it yet. Let's put it, yeah, in here. Because there won't be anything in there, I don't think. Go to buildings, there's our depot. This might be a little tight though. Yeah, that's pretty tight. Hmm. Where do I want to put this? Well, let's do this. We'll spin it around. Kind of line it up so it's parallel to this station. Maybe right about there. And then we'll put some tracks to it. And then we'll loop around. We'll loop around and connect it. Is that going to work? It did. And we'll just put in a signal. I don't think it has to be a one-way signal. And we'll put it there. That way it won't interrupt any trains that are already on the line. So our infrastructure is there. Now I gotta actually create the line. We'll go to lines and we'll do a new line. Click on the first one, our Colorado Springs halt, which is gonna bring grain all the way down to here. Colorado Springs East. Then we're going to come back and we're going to deliver food to Colorado Springs. Okay, so there's our route. Now we do have to think about our loading times. So at Colorado Springs, I want to load all. I go to Colorado Springs, sorry, Colorado Springs halt. I want a full load all. So what's that going to do? Well, full load all, the vehicle will stop and wait until it is fully loaded. And I want that because this train station is going to fill up fast. So it's not going to be there long anyway. Now, when we get all the way to the other end, down here at Colorado Springs, what I want to do, Colorado Springs East, I'm sorry, so what I really wanted to do, I wanted to load food and unload grain. Now how long do I want them to be there? Well at this end, I want the trains to keep moving. I don't want them to spend too long there, so it will just be load if available. And I might play with these time, this maximum waiting time later. And then there's Colorado Springs, and what are we going to do there? We're not going to load anything, but we're going to unload the food, just like that. So now we have the parameters, the loading time parameters, and the loading conditions set up for our line. Now we got to buy a train. A train or two, at least one to start. Let's buy a vehicle. And our only option when we start is the Baldwin six wheels. It's not a very strong vehicle. It only has a top speed of 40 kilometers per hour and a very low in power, but it's all we have. So we start with it. Now, here's a trick that I do, and you may not agree with it or you may not want to use it, but it's something that I found works for me. So it has to do with the cargo wagons. So I'm going to do a 6 to 1 ratio. So the gondola has a capacity of 7 units. So the gondola, it carries grain. The boxcar, it carries the food. Now it also has a capacity of 7. So if I want a ratio of food to grain, 
then the number of boxcars in this particular case equals the, the number of boxcars in each will equal the ratio or the capacity. I didn't say that right. So the number of boxcars will also equal the ratio or the capacity because they both cars have the same type of capacity. So I'm going to go 6 to 1. And I'm going to explain that in a minute. But there is the gondola which carries the food. I'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I'm going to add one boxcar. And one thing I'm mindful of is down here it says 70 kilowatts in terms of, I guess, power, and it's showing me mediocre. I'm not sure if that rating is for every single car being loaded or how it measures it. I would assume it's every single wagon being filled. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go with a 6 to 1 ratio and we'll buy that. We'll add it to our only line, line number 1. Oh, and we'll hit close. And one thing I should do is go back to line number one and give it a name that means something. So it goes from Colorado Springs Hall to Colorado Springs. Basically, we'll just call it something simple. Call it Colorado Food Train. There we go. So we've given it a name that means something. When we have 150 lines, we'll be able to sort it out later. And now I'm going to hit start. And let's speed it up. And away he goes. Here's why I did a 6 to 1 ratio of wheat to food. I built the biggest cargo terminus I could possibly do and the reason I did that is look how fast it's filling up and even though I have all these cars it's going to fill up quick and that train's going to take off well it will shortly anyway so one of my problems is making sure that this terminus doesn't get overloaded now this train is doing something I don't want it to do I believe it's full of grain. It is full of grain and it's still sitting here. I'm going to slow down the speed and we'll go to the line because we need to manage that. So instead of going full load all, okay here's where I made the mistake. So full load all means the vehicle will stop and wait until it's fully loaded. So it's going to be there forever if I leave this on that setting. Why? because this last car is for food and it's never going to fill up. So we'll change this to full load any because full load any means the vehicle will stop and wait until one cargo type is fully loaded. Let's go full load any. And the train immediately turns around and starts on its way. So let's speed things up. So you can see it filled up very quickly and my cargo terminus, it's already got 60, 62 and climbing, it's going up fast. Now if we go down to the other end of the line, you'll also see why I did a 6 to 1 ratio of the cargo wagons. So here is the Colorado Springs processing food plant. So here we actually have the opposite problem. And that is that, so the rule is it takes two grain to make one food. Right now we have zero stored and this plant isn't operating at all. So initially that's our problem is getting this plant up and running and keeping it running so that it has some food, sorry, so that it has some grain stored. So it has some now, it'll go for a little while and then this conveyor belt here will stop because it'll use it up. So that's our problem. So we have two opposite problems. Not enough product down here at the food processing plant. And at the other end, our problem is too much grain. So that's why I went with a 6 to 1 ratio. 
And later as the game goes on, I will go down to a two to one ratio to match what this input is required. So it's two grain to one food. Later on in the game, when I have bigger, faster trains and bigger loads, I will go down to a two to one ratio. But for now, I gotta do this to make things work. So it's the year 1851 and we're just getting started. We got our three trucks lined up, they're ready to go. Our train comes down here. He's making some money for us, he loads up fast and away he goes. So I really do need more trains, so let's see if I can afford that right now. So let's go to our depot. And I think I'll hit pause because I don't want my money to go down. I want it to stay where it is. And I buy another vehicle. And I might have to get my ratio off just a little bit. We'll see what I can afford. So there's the Baldwin six wheels. That's all I've got. For cargo, I'm going to try going one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'll bet you if I put one boxcar on, I can't afford it. So what I am going to do is go to my bank account and I am going to borrow $500,000. You don't want to borrow too much when you begin the game because you already start the game with a $5 million loan. So I don't want to go up too high at the beginning of the game, but right now I need money to buy trains. Go back to my depot. So now I can afford it at $1.6 million and change. So we'll buy that. And we'll put it on our only line, our Colorado food train line. And get that going. But you can see what I mean. This cargo terminus is just loading up like crazy. It's at 200 and something. And it'll keep going. And in fact, what's going to happen is that we will actually get to the point where it will be overloaded and we'll start losing product. And there's really nothing we can do about it in the early stages of the game until we get more trains and faster, more powerful trains that have more cars on them. So we made a dent in it there. We're staying away from having that warning sign of being overloaded. So I don't have a lot of money just yet. We're only into one year of the game. I borrowed additional 500,000. So let's just see if these trains can make us some money. That guy yet isn't making me any money at all, but he hasn't actually delivered anything yet. Let's go back and see how our trucks are doing. He's loaded up with food and taken off. We got a couple idle. They're costing me a little bit of money, but you know, I could get rid of one of them right now, maybe. Maybe that's a good idea. Click on one, manage vehicle, and sell it. I don't really need it just yet. I'll leave one there for now. And when the load builds up here at the truck station, we can add some more trucks in later. But right now, it's a balancing act, really. We're trying to balance the low overloading down here with the lack of loading down here and you know hardly any food in the middle. So things are starting to build up over here, which we expected it would. We've now got 39 food and we're starting to get a little bit stored, but it runs out very quickly and the conveyor belt stops. We don't want that. We want that conveyor belt to keep moving. Anyway, we're not overloaded yet, so that little bit of food there is not a problem. It doesn't present a problem just yet. And here comes another train. So I think I'm going to have to let the game run for a little while. And we'll come back later after we started making some money 
And we'll probably buy some more trains. Well, look at that. We're in 1852. And, oh, we were making some money. Yeah, we're making a little bit of money right now. So that's going to volley around back and forth. Because it's pretty volatile right now. But we're starting to make some money. And our bank account, as you can see, it's a little bit up there. It's above water. You can see here at 1852, we're making $131,000 in change. So we're going in the right direction. Yeah, it went down a little bit. So it's going to bounce around. That's the trouble with the early game is that the bank account and the finances are very up and down. They're very volatile. And that's what we're trying to manage. So it's 1852. I could use some more trains. I'm really reluctant to borrow too much money too early. Um, I don't really want to borrow any more than about 8.5 million in the first 10 years of the game if I can avoid it. The reason I want to wait for 10 years is by 1860, there's a train that we're going to be have available to us. It's the General. And it's much more powerful than the Baldwin. And it will give us the ability to have more cars. And they move a little bit faster. I think they're about five kilometers faster than this little Baldwin is. So that's really one of, what I want to save my money for is for those bigger trains. So now, the this is the hard part for me in this game is being patient. And that is don't spend all your money right away. Just let the game play itself out and let yourself make some money. So we have a little bit of food at our truck station. Not too much. It's only seven. So we're nowhere near in danger of this truck station being overloaded at this point. And if I click on Colorado Springs, we can see they are getting food, 14 out of 42, so it's 30%. Let's check our bank account again. 1853, and we're making money. So that's not too bad. We're three years in and we're making money. But we are going to have to purchase more trains and that's going to make us go down a little bit well probably down a lot but we got to buy trains and have assets to make money so that's the balancing act in this game as you probably already know he's making good money for me right now a hundred thousand dollars and if i click on the line i can see the balance is right now we're making about 164 thousand dollars so trains are where the money is and Trucks are really just there to support the train lines. Well, that's quite a jump. And we look at our overall bank account. We're getting over $900,000. So I just have to be patient. Let these guys make a little bit more money. And then I'm going to buy some trains. Now, one thing I will do is just check the condition of my vehicles. So right now, everything is either good or very good. So we have no worries about the conditions of our vehicles in that, in that they have to be replaced because they're in poor or very poor or bad condition. So we can see the conveyor belt moving now at the Colorado Springs Processing Food Plant. And we are now getting quite a significant amount of food that's building up here. So the next time I buy a train, I'm probably not going to do a 6 to 1 ratio of cargo wagons. It'll probably be closer to a 2 to 1. You know, so for example, four boxcars to uh, eight, I forget what type of wagon it was, but four of the wagons, sorry, eight of the wagons that uh, carry the, the wheat. I apologize. I keep saying wheat. I should be saying grain. Anyway, we're getting the reverse problem now. Things are starting to load up at this end. So back at our farm at the cargo terminus station, we still have the overloading problem. And this is more of a problem than what we have at the other end at the food processing plant. So we still got to work on this. And yes, we're getting the warning sign now. If I just hover over that, that some cargo items are lost because the station is overloaded. I know we have that problem, but I need to make more money so I can buy some trains. 
and I am reluctant to borrow any more money at this point. So I guess that's the decision that you have to make is when do you want to borrow money and how much? Anyway, the rule of thumb that I use, I mentioned it before, I really don't want to go over borrowing a total of 8.5 million or more than that before 19, sorry, before 1860. And remember, you start out with 5 million. So I still have some room to go. We're at 1854 and I'm making money. So what I might do is borrow some more money, maybe another million and get another train going. Because I got to deal with this. So I'll hit pause. I don't like to bury myself in debt, but I think this is going to work. So I'll borrow and borrow again. So I got about $2 million. And let's buy another train. The only locomotive I still have is the little Baldwin. In terms of wagons, that hasn't changed, I don't think. We've got the gondola, that's what it's called, it's called a gondola that carries the grain. So I'll take six of those. Maybe five and two. Let's just alter it just a little bit because I want to pick up, start picking up more food at the other end of the line. Let's go five and two. I'm getting a mediocre power rating here, but I think it'll work out just fine. And that'll just turn that ratio around just a little bit. So we'll buy that and we'll add it to our line. And we'll click on that guy. We'll follow them around for a little bit. Yeah, this is the part of the game that to me requires a lot of patience because the tendency I have is like, well, I don't want to wait to buy more trains. I want to buy more trains now. And the trouble is if I bury myself in debt, I'll never get back out again. And away he goes. So, so far, even though we have another train on, if I click on here, yeah, we're still way overloaded. Anyway, we know that, and we are trying to deal with our problem. Well, let's go down to the other end and see what's happening at the other end of the line. So we're back at our food processing plant. You can see that the conveyor belt is running. Got a little bit stored, not too much, and we're starting to get our production up there. We're still not fully up there in transport or shipment, and we're not yet up to 100% production. Now we have a overloading problem that we're going to get at this food processing plant terminal. So here we have a train coming in with a ratio of 5 to 2. So it's going to pick up just a little bit more. It's going to pick up 14 food, which it just did, and that's going to help us out. So I'll keep playing with those ratios as I buy trains to try to keep a balance between this end, the food processing plant, and this end at the farm. We have two competing problems. And let's just check in the middle to see how our town is doing. Go down here. Oops, our town is over here. Doing okay. We got a little bit of food there, but that's fine. It's not building up too much. I don't want to buy any more trucks yet unless I have to because money is tight. How are we doing with food? We're around 50% now. So if you recall at the beginning of the game or near the beginning of this video, I said you wanted to avoid deadheading or minimize deadheading. So if you look at the line I have set up, you know, we're carrying grain all the way to this end. We're carrying food all the way to here. And this last little bit here, we are deadheading. So essentially we're deadheading for one quarter 
or 25% of the entire route. And I think that's reasonable. To me, it's pretty tough sometimes to find locations or opportunities where there's absolutely no deadheading at all. Unless you want to start building a lot of truck lines to support your train lines. That's the other option, but I'm trying to keep things simple. That is the whole point of this video. Let's keep it simple. I find if you have a lot of trucks at the beginning, well, I'm starting to find anyway, that it just gets, you get dozens and dozens of trucks trying to support the trains and they just can't keep up. So I'm trying to do this, make money with minimal number of truck support. And so far it's working. We're in the plus here. So now I'm up to almost $200,000 in 1856. And we had bought a train back in 1855. So again, we're making money. So we'll close that. Let's click on that guy. So he's making money for us. Okay, so he's in this section where he's deadheading. So this is where he will lose a little bit of money. And we know that because that's the way we've set it up. But again, it's a simple line, it works, and it gets us started. So I'm going to let this game run for a little while because I want to buy some more trains, but I need my bank account to build up. So let's let it run for a while, build up, and we're going to buy some more trains. Now remember, I, it's now 1856. In 1860, the general becomes available, and it's a much more powerful, I don't know if it's much more, but it's a more powerful steam locomotive. And once we get the general in on this, and the cars that it can pull, we can really start to make some money and make some progress. And once we start doing that, we can then start building other lines. The trick is not to fall into the trap, of borrowing too much money too early or building too many lines to start. So as you can see I really focused on one particular supply chain. Wow things really are loading up at this end. Oh we're just on the cusp of being overloaded yeah and we're overloaded. So we have that problem. First we had a problem of not having enough stuff down here. Now we have too much. So probably the next train I buy will have to have a two to one ratio. So take away one food for every two grain that I bring in. Or maybe more than that. We're back to making some money and our bank accounts going up. And we're at 1857. So maybe I should buy a couple more trucks. So we're getting some food piling up here. I still only have one vehicle to choose from, the American horse-drawn carriage. So let's go, eh, maybe two more of those. That'll help work on this. Okay, this is what I've been waiting for. A new vehicle is available. Now, it's 1858, and I had said this vehicle, the General, wouldn't be available until 1860. Man, I was wrong about that. Anyway, it's available two years earlier, which is okay. Earlier than I thought, anyway. So now, I'm going to just... We're making money. We're at about 1.1 million. So the next train I buy will have the general as a locomotive and I can have a longer uh, cargo combination because it's just a little bit stronger than this little bald one that I'm using. So let's make a little bit more money and then we're going to buy another train. So we're on the cusp here so I think what I'm going to do is I am going to hit pause. Take a look at my bank account. I borrowed 6.5 million. Hmm. Well, let's just let it play. I'm making money, let's let it go. Okay, let's just see where things are. It's now 1859 and we're making money. 
and ran about 1.6, almost $1.7 million. So I think it's time just to take a little bit of a loan and let's hit pause. And I'm gonna buy another vehicle and this time it's gonna be the general. All right, let's go to our depot. Oh, first of all, I'm gonna borrow some money. Only at 6.5 million. I borrow some more, 2.1. Okay, let's go for it. We're at 7.5 billion now. Because I want a nice bigger train. So I go to locomotives. And now by the general, it's got a top speed of 45 kilometers per hour. So what I want for a wagon combination, I wonder. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm still a mediocre. How many boxcars can I add? One, two, three. Okay. And I can still afford it. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then there's three boxcars. All right, let's buy that. And we'll add it to our line. and hit play. So obviously since we just bought something our money is going to go down, our bank account is going to take a little bit of a dip, but at the same time in the long run it's going to help us out. So now we've got the general, he's a pretty big train, well bigger than what we've got and he can move pretty fast. So I'm hoping that the additional train, the additional power and the additional capacity we'll start getting rid of this imbalance. Meanwhile, our truck station at Colorado Springs, it's doing pretty well. It's getting some food there, but it's not overloading. I could probably add one more truck, and why don't we do that? So we'll buy a vehicle, and we'll just buy one. And we'll add that to our truck line. And that should do it for now. Because we're losing money, we spend a lot of money this year. Sorry, last year, it's now 1860. And we're making a little bit of money, so we gotta keep going. Well folks, it's 1862. We've got about a million dollars in our account, and we're making money. We've made that money by taking a simple approach. We started with one complete, non-complex supply chain. We minimized our train deadheading, and we resisted the urge to overspend and put ourselves too far in debt. And from here on out, we have options. We can add another train in the line, but I think the next logical step is to start working on other lines. If you have any questions, please note them below, and I will answer them to the best of my ability. If you have any other Transport Fever 2 topics you would like to see a video on, please note that below too, because I'm always looking for video ideas. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you haven't done so already, smash that subscribe button below right now and click on the bell, so you don't miss out on more great content. Click on that box in the bottom left hand corner right now to see a video you're almost guaranteed to love. This video was selected just for you by YouTube, and they know what you like. So what are you waiting for? Click on that box now, sit back, relax, and enjoy another video.